what are the foundational sort of elements to required to create a high performance environment? Do you feel? Yeah, it's a good, it's a good broad question. Um, but I think it's yeah, it probably comes back to what I've found trying to do that in different environments, like going from one that you would say is an example of excellence and high performance culture, um, to trying to find ways to navigate building that in other environments and sort of found to go back to actually defining what excellence is for that group in that context and in that environment at the time. Um, so depending on the, the history that you have or the playing group that you have or the resource or the experience or the cohesion that you have, like you know, winning a trophy in your first year and continually doing it over and over and over is definitely excellent and very high performing, but it's a, it's a pretty lofty goal sometimes and you, you want to have a look at how you can measure what excellence is. And moving over to the sort of communication side, like effective communication, um, obviously in, from staff members to, to players, but also things like meetings and how involved the players are and, and trying to get them, give them autonomy. Um, like what's a good way to sort of get a read on is our communication effective in terms of, is it a duration thing? Uh, you know, how, how long should a meeting go for? Um and as well as what what are the athletes retaining uh, in terms of are they able to actually apply that to the training session or to the game? Yeah. So what's your sort of stance on effective communication from that side of things? Yeah, I think it's one thing you definitely see um, when you're in a professional environment. If you've got you know five coaches and a, a number of different performance staff, and medical, and everybody wants to do a great job. Um, so everybody wants to do 10 things really well and pass on 10 really good pieces of information that very quickly becomes like 500 different pieces of information for the players to to process and try to dive in on. So a lot of it is how you can uh, get really good alignment um, so that you can give it like there's a something performance, something organisational and you get one message that covers the four and then you have to get four different messages that are kind of the same thing and identifying where those double ups are and just trying to be really efficient and clear and concise and how important is leadership do you think in, in not only establishing uh, an excellent environment high performance environment but uh, maintaining the standards uh, crucial and it just such different types of leadership I think too um, not just having uh, a view that maybe your most experienced staff members or your most experienced players in your team are the leaders like you can have some very very experienced players who aren't necessarily the leaders within the group um, but they're just they've got good experience to pass on but they lead in different ways so sometimes leaders are great by leading by example some guys are really good with with a narrative and with words and, and creating a clear picture in people's minds what strategies or techniques do you have for, for managers to help the whole department sort of get over uh, challenges and setbacks yeah, it's it's something we've sort of looked into where uh, from a resilience and, and, and dealing with, with pressure or with setbacks and how you see and, and perceive those because we like we know that there's uh, adversity is going to lead to growth if you approach it in the right way and, and, and you learn invaluable lessons from adversity and yeah, it can lead to lead to success and excellence down the road if you if you learn a valuable lesson um, and, and setbacks will come uh, and, and things won't always go to plan and so but being able to cope with that is uh, it's an interesting one because we might put a lot of support structures and make sure we have uh, mindset coaches or mental skills coaches or whatever you want to term them within your organisation Is there areas that uh, professional development or courses or, or books that you advise to build that self awareness um, when when the, you know because it's easier said than done to have that satellite view when you're sort of uh, in those high pressure moments and there is frustration uh, and I guess there's an element of it can have a bit of a ripple effect on the whole department where it you know, without even realizing it, it's actually just maybe one of the players that's sort of fed that on to you or. or a staff member and so forth but to be able to reset and actually look at it like well this is an area that we can learn and actually get better and perceive it that way opposed to um yeah like you said getting emotional and and reacting yeah i think i think really early days with canterbury we did a a good course that was it was like an optimism focused course um that 
because it's sort of as a, as a default um as high performers or as just as people and humans really like we default to negative um you know you you you're very slow to reward yourself for the one thing that you do well but you're very quick to punish yourself for the 10 things that you feel like you didn't do very well and and that's what we focus on you know if you give somebody you give somebody a, a a balanced amount of feedback um the thing they're going to hold on to is going to be the thing that you that they perceive you said they didn't do well or need to get better at because we're especially in an environment we're taught to constantly seek improvement 